Uh oh. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <coughs> Hi Amber, how you doing mate? Disgusting. Oh, Jesus. We're getting very deep, aren't we? Oh, man. Oh, God. Dear. Gonna get lost. Naturally, once bled, the product must be scalded, dehaired, and scraped ready for gambling and evisceration. For this, we pass them through the steam reservoir, which is kept at a constant temperature by passing excess high pressure venting from the engines via the boiler and series of large copper pipes into a stone chamber just below the workhouse. At the centre of the machine, there is a component that must be kept at a consistently low temperature, which controls operations and the processing of product throughout the system. Alongside this, we Alongside this, refrigeration is the utmost importance in retaining product quality, and this also requires heat to re be removed from certain areas of the machine. Two problems are therefore combined into a single solution, the removal of heat from some areas and the requirements for increased heat in others. Conducting panels draw heat using the principles of convection regulated by the boiler and sending freezing air along one set of pipes in one direction and superheated vapours in another. Awesome. Oh. Isn't it dangerous allowing this filthy discharge to collect so close to the core? We can use the flow to drive the turbines. There will always be a torrent of excreta flooding through these tunnels. We can use this to supplement the steam production and ensure constancy. Thank God, the stench! This fecal matter is the true product of the age. My mysterious friend is correct. The sewers are indeed flooded. To descend further, I will have to find the local sluice pumps to drop the water levels. The smell is almost unbearable. It makes me gag. Why should the saboteur have flooded the tunnels though? What did he hope to achieve? Better not be going goddamn water demons. We're gonna have a piggy water demon. Oh, <laughs> I was kidding. Come on. It's an electric piggy water demon. <laughs> oh, I'm gutted. I hated that damn thing in Dark Descent. Oh, I can't believe it's pulled that on me. You son of a... <gasps> Tell me that's whatever it is in the water. Ah, oh, that is... Unbelievable. Proper labyrinth, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck that. Loose gate one. Uh, 
Yeah, opening that is just going to raise the water level, isn't it? Something tells me walking across and this bridge is not such a good idea, you know. I think we'll go the long way around. It's just, whatever it is in the water is electric and that looks a lot like a metal bridge. So, sluice gate 2. is presumably there. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, you can actually hear the goddamn thing. Oh, come on. Come on, play fair. Oh, you son of a... Piggy heads in there. I, I honestly don't know what to do. Uh, okay. Okay. Why? Why? Why are you not giving me a radio message? Sluice one and sluice two. Okay. Several of the older forms have breached their containment area and escaped into the sewers. They remind me of my limitations. This is no chalm and I am no liar. At least not quite yet. It is the heart generated from keeping the doorway between a that is to blame. We cannot simply pack them about with cooling as we do at the centre where the doorway is. The later versions are kept safe by the freezing temperature of those towers. Up here, when the air is hot and fetid, they become overheated, and their duality tears, tears them asunder. As the other place flies from their cells and their vital splinters, they live sporadically, torn from one world to the other and back again in violent and predictable bursts. For a few seconds, there are creatures of this, there are creatures of this world, and they are torn away and cease to have physical form. This vicious ripping back and forth between worlds has driven them quite insane. I have ordered the affected areas sealed and will not allow my loyal workers to enter. These are damned places now, the abode of failed experiments, ghosts of fear and spite. So this all stems back very much to where Alexander was trying to get to the the other world in the Dark Descent, wasn't it? Oh, there we go. Master Madness, drain the waters, open the way to the bilge pumps. We are waiting for you. Cheers, Mayhem. <laughs> I'm trying to figure the story out. I think I'm 
I'm just sort of starting to starting to piece it together. Now there's nothing to be gained from me walking into there, is there? Because or is there? I, I think I've got to get around the oh what? Look at that. How the hell am I supposed to get to that? Yeah, that's not a good idea, is it? Oh my Jesus, good lord. Yeah, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. And that is not happening. Anyone got any ideas? Oh Christ. I've completely forgotten the way back. Hey, oh. Are we back? <sighs> hmm. <laughs> All right, so we've got Sluice Gate one open there. Oh, what? I think it's just that. I just can't help but think there's a daddy bacon waiting to uh, chomp on. Oh, whoa! I wasn't expecting that. I thought I'd try it. <laughs> okay, okay, stay calm. God, that sounds disgusting. But we can save them. We can set them free. We can replace a rotten old world with a clean new one. Mr. Landis, you sound every bit the fanatic. Well, how can I be otherwise, Professor? How can any man of ethics simply stand by and watch this world drown in its own excrement? And your engineer, yeah. this visionary with whom you have embarked upon this course, does he share your views? Indeed he does. Indeed he does. The poor fellow has <laughs> seen it all before. Now, this is not the first great civilization he has wept for. And so you set about things immediately upon your return. Naturally, naturally. These things cannot be left to rot upon the tree. And sponsors were remarkably easy to find. I tell you, Professor, a trail of greed brings rich men to your door like pigs to truffles. Right, okay.